So in this video, we're going to look at iRobot's Roomba 500 series of vacuum cleaner robots. And we're going to focus on troubleshooting them, particularly the testing and diagnostics procedures that iRobot uses at their service centers to test out the Roombas when you send it to them. The exact same testing and procedures you can do at home to try out your own Roomba to see if you can isolate the problem that you may be having with yours. Now, something I suggest you go online and find that I have printed out here is the Roomba 500 series service manual. Again, this is what the guidelines are for testing out these Roombas. It's exactly what they use at the service centers to figure out what is wrong with your Roomba vacuum cleaner. And what we're going to focus on is doing various tests here. We're basically going to show how that all works. Now, two things you need to keep in mind about this is, number one, when you're testing out your Roomba, you don't have the safety components active like it would have when it's just operating normally. So if you're testing something out like the drive motors or things like that and it's moving along a surface, if it runs into a wall or drives off an edge, it's going to either fall down if it falls, goes off over an edge, or it's going to get stuck up against a wall and stall the motors because you don't have those safety elements running, again, because it's in a testing mode. And number two, you have to be careful with some of the options on here that I'm going to show because they will change some of the operations of how the Roomba performs and behaves. So you want to be careful that you don't misconfigure your own Roomba so that you <laughs> have it working properly when you're done. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into the testing area of the Roomba. This is generally what people are going to look for when they want to test out the various functions of the Roomba to isolate what is wrong with it. And there's two different modes. There's an auto advance and there is a manual advance. The auto advance is basically a pass-fail. It goes through the entire testing procedure and you work the components of the robot like the bumper and the motor, things like that, and the robot will decide if it's a pass or fail and automatically go through each test. The manual mode, you use the dock and spot buttons to go through each individual test. And then you can isolate a particular test you want to perform on a component. Well, we're going to use the auto advance because we want to go through every single test. So we'll start with the testing procedure. We're going to hold dock and clean and we're going to hit the spot three times. One, two, three. And it should have that little archipelago like that. If you want to go into the manual mode, you do that six times instead of three times. Now the very first test that it's performing right now, I'm going to zoom in because we want to watch the display here. The first test is just testing out all the indicators on the robot. So it's testing out our clock and scheduler function, our alert. It's testing the dirt detect indicator. Of course, the clean button should be pulsing and then it should be alternating between the dock and the spot. And of course, the days are going through, so that indicates that our display is working. So I'm going to advance to the very first test here in the auto advance by pressing dock. So we are in the first test, and this is testing out the buttons on the surface. And you'll see the dirt detect indicator flashes for what number of tests we're in. So we're testing the buttons. I hit day, spot should light up. Dock should light up, should light up, light up. And you'll notice the clean flickers after each one. Hit the clock. Okay, and it showed green. That means it's a, it's a pass on that test. So it automatically advances. If I hit dock, I basically say that that test fails and it goes to the next test. So that's how the robot indicates that there's a failed test if I have to skip through it because it's not working. So, test number two is the bumpers. Let me zoom out here. So it's testing our left bumper should light up the spot. The right bumper should light up the dock. It showed green, that's a pass on that test. Our next one is our outer cliff sensors. So I kind of need to pick the robot up here. As you can see, it's showing dock there. Okay, that passed. And the next one is the inner cliff sensors. These are the ones toward the front. That 
past that. Next one, and I'm following along in the service guide here for which test we're performing. Okay, now we're looking at the outer light touch sensors. These are basically the distance sensors that tell the robot to slow down when it's getting toward an object. Okay, that's one sensor over there. The other sensor should be over here. To find it, there it is. Pass that test. Okay, now we got the front light touch sensors. There's the one there, and the other's there. Okay, that one's passed. Okay, and the very center sensors. Okay, pass that test. Okay, now we have the wheel drop sensors. These are the ones that tell the robot if the wheel has dropped down, such as going over an edge. Okay, the dock is for a right. The left should be the spot. It is. Okay, basically the testing works top down, so you make sure that the spot comes on for a certain test and then the dock comes on, so that way it will follow through. Okay, the next one is the IR receiver in the front here. And I'm going to use its home base for that. I'm going to point it at it. Get it around here. Okay. It got the IR signal from the home base, so it passed that test. Okay, it's got the front directional IR receivers. So these are the ones that work from an angle. Use the home base to do it again. Okay, there's one sensor. There's the other sensor. Get it to go through the test here. Okay. Now I gotta pick it up. Now, the test that just happened after that one is the battery test. So that one automatically goes right through. The test that's running right now is the left wheel stall test. That wheel should be running. Dock should be lit up here. Now I'm gonna stall that motor. And it should be having the spotlight up. I let it release it. Okay, it advances to the next one. Now it's doing the other wheel. Again, I wait for the dock to light up. I'm gonna stall that motor. Spot should light up. I release it, it should advance. Okay, that was checking the that was checking the wheel encoders. When both wheels run at the same time at high speed, that makes sure that the encoders which measure the distance it travels is working. So that's worked. Okay, now it's doing the test for this front caster wheel. So you spin the caster, and it should light up the spot there. Okay, pass. Now we're doing a main brush test. Okay, I stall those main brushes. Okay, and the spot should light up. Cool. Now this should have spot and dock, but I'm only getting spot here. So, this test is not going to pass through. So, I'm going to have to count this as a fail. Now the next one is a debris test. We actually have to have it go through a path of debris. I don't have that set up, so we're gonna have to skip that test. Okay, it's testing the vacuum bin. The vacuum bin works. I'm gonna test the rotating brush. Hey, okay, dock is lit. Now I gotta stall that brush. Okay, both are lit. Okay, it's passed that test. Okay, so that takes care of the main functions. We're now into the test involving charging. So I gotta plug the charger into the charging port on the side here, and that will test out the charging port functions to make sure they're working. Gotta find it. Plug that in. And that'll run through the test on the charge port. It's gonna make sure it's providing the correct current that the trickle charge function is working and a couple of other things as well. Okay, so the charge port is working on all four tests that it did there. 
Now what we got to do is test out the home base charging. We're just going to test the charging port at the front. So I'm going to put our home base on and then I'm going to plug the home base into power to make sure that that's working. Okay, contacts are on. Now basically from here on out, all the tests are going to run automatically. I don't have to intervene because after the charging test, it's going to do... Now it's testing the software on here, so it's just going to go right through. Now, if all the tests pass, this thing should be flashing green rapidly at the end. But since I skipped over two of those tests, I counted them as a fail. So it's going to flash red here. See, it's flashing red. And some of you may recognize this as the uh, death flash on your Roomba. So, but that indicates that not all the tests passed. Because again, I had to count the debris test and the main brush test as a fail. Because I skipped over them with the dock. So, but all the other tests passed. If all the test passes, again, this would be flashing rapid green. Now, to get out of this, you generally would have to take out the battery to reset it. But... You can reset your Roomba if you hold the spot in the dock buttons down for approximately 10 seconds. You'll see this go off and then I'll let go and the, room, the Roomba will automatically reset. Take you go. And that little sound indicates that the Roomba has reset. So that is how you test out your Roomba if you need to isolate a problem or just to generally see if everything on it is working. Now. The other test that I could show, but I don't really have the setup for that, is the Roomba Mobility Test. I want to find it in here. You may have seen this in demos at CES if you've ever been there. The Mobility Test basically puts it through different types of floors, like a linoleum, linoleum floor or a high pile carpet. This is basically just to test out the mobility of the robot to make sure that it can travel fine on a smooth surface and then something like a more stiff surface like carpet and to make sure that various functions of its guidance system like the sensors are all working correctly. Since I don't actually have the test platform for that, we can't show how that works. But if you want to enter that, it's basically the same as getting into the testing mode, but you press the spot button more than six times. You had to press it either nine or twelve times. Nine times brings you into the auto advanced mobility test and twelve will bring you into the manual advanced mobility test. So let's try, let's look at the manual one since I showed you the auto advanced one. So I'm going to basically take this off the dock because I don't want it running. Turn the rubber off. Okay, we're going to hold our clean and dock button. And we're going to hit the spot 12 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now we're in the manual advanced mobility test. Now, this again, I'm not going to be able to really show anything. But when they're at the service center, they generally run test number 3. And we have to get to clean. And it's going to say it's asking for next. Because we want to specify which of the five tests for mobility we want to run. And generally, the one for Wednesday is the third one, and that's the one that they run. So we're going to hit clean. I'm going to go to Wednesday. And basically, if I wanted to run that test, I get that highlighted. I hit clean. And let's see. That's what it's supposed to do. Hold on. Actually, I don't think I have it in the right day should be in Tuesday. And that's basically a run. And that would basically run the mobility test again if I had it set up for that. Since I don't, I can't really show that. Now the other two functions that I have I can show here relatively quick. The third item I'm going to show is you can actually view the software date of your Roomba. So it kind of lets you see when it was manufactured and also what version of the software is on the robot. Now it works in reverse from how we try to get into the testing mode or the mobility testing mode. 
we hold spot in clean and we hit the dock button three times oh uh, six times one two three four five six and now we can see the date of the software and also the software version and that's basically all that function does it just lets us know what date the software is in the version of it so that's really all there is to that if you wanted to look at that information and close that out now the last part here is not covered in the service manual I kind of found it out on my own but what it does it kind of lets you see in real time the sensor data on the Roomba while it's in cleaning mode so to get into that menu we hold the spot and clean just like before but we hit dock three times one two three and it should say off because that means we're not trying to show any sensor data but if I want to go through I hit the dock or spot buttons spot basically advances through so the first one here is the wheel drop and what this will do is say I turn that on and I'm gonna do cleaning with the Roomba now with the Roomba while it's cleaning if a wheel drops off like it drops on an edge I'll visually see that see the dock lit up for the left one if the right one falls down the spot lights up now you won't see the flash if I hit the cleaning button there but while the robot is in a cleaning mode I'll actually be able to see real-time sensor data while it's cleaning so again I can look at other stuff like I can look at the bumper I can tell if the bumper has been hit pushed I can see if the cliff sensors have been have gone off I can look at the main brush encoder I can look at the side brush encoder including the right and left motors also the lighthouse binoculars basically my understanding this is supposed to let me see which IR sensors are receiving what from the home base let me see the home base over here should see some activity probably not going to see it with this that may be for the lighthouses or the IR towers so let me change it to that other mode let's see lighthouse on one you see I think that might be it okay yeah, there it is see when I don't have the IR beacon from the home base here in range of it it's showing zero and once I put it in range you see the numbers flicker that means it's getting an IR signal and actually the numbers change depending on how far away the base is so that kind of lets me see the sensor data from the IR receiver on the front of the robot there. We'll look at some others here. The touch sensors. Again, I can see all the sensor data in real time as it's cleaning, depending on the selections. And the docking infrared, a couple of other things. So basically, this lets, again, while the robot is doing a normal clean, if you wanted to, you could actually use the display to see what sensor data is being fed to the Roomba during a cleaning procedure. And then when you're all done, just set it back to off, and basically your Roomba will just work normally. So, that is how you perform testing in various diagnostics and also learn about your software date and version and a couple of other interesting features about the Roomba 500 series if you're having trouble with your own Roomba robot.